Welcome to Hacksby Shed. Ten months ago I got this Harrison Universal Milling Machine and if you follow my channel that you know I've done a lot of work on it to get it right. I thought I'd finish working on this head. I haven't. I used it the other day at top speed which is 1500 rpm although I can go up to 2000 with the inverter because that's where I've set it to its maximum um, but at 1500 within 10 minutes this bearing and this bearing were getting very hot. I suspect the bearings just been over tightened there's too much preload on it so I'm hoping I can just take this cap off reduce the preload and it'll be okay but with this machine you never know it feels pretty tight the gearbox is in neutral but that feels too tight to me so we'll see what we find. So just three cap heads to take out and off we come. This is full of grease, a bit like the black grease you get in CV joints. This one is, this one isn't. I don't know why. Loads of grease in there though. Alrighty. So this, ah uh, okay, there's a Allen grub screw here. Well there's actually three Allen grub screws and then three holes for a peg spanner. Now Phil, who runs a channel called My Week This Week, who lives not too far from me, has taken one of these apart before and uh, we've been discussing by email what to do. So he says, loosen this maybe an eighth of a turn, that's all. Give it a tap on top so that the preload is, uh, well, so it relaxes the pressure on the bottom bearing as well as the top. So that implies that this spindle uh, is fairly tight in the bearings. I don't think I'll be able to do that with my fingers. I'll need to find something to knock that round with. Well, I held the spindle and I used one of these peg C spanner adjustable and the ring's now loose. It wasn't absolutely excessive, but it was quite tight. We'll just give it a tap and see if it will free off. Hmm. Now, I don't know exactly how these things are constructed. I'm not sure if the shaft is coming down at all. I'm going to take this side cover off. Of course one of the screws is always stripped, at least one. As I look at the engagement of this gear and this gear over here, that feels pretty tight to me. And logically, I suppose, if I tap the top of the spindle, it's not going to come down if that gear is too tightly engaged with that gear. Now I know, because I can see the marks, that the collar that's at above this one has been adjusted. And I think the height of this gear, which means the amount of engagement with this gear, is done with basically two collars. This sleeve actually here, and above it a collar. So I'm going to try and get the one above this gear relaxed, see if I can get the spindle to come down slightly just to prove how that works and to take off the bind with this helical gear, assuming it's binding. I just get that feeling that it perhaps is. There's a bit of movement there but it just feels a bit tighter maybe than I think it should be. It's just a way of proving anyway, got to explore a bit really. Right, easy bit done. Now I need to get in there with the peg spanner or something. This is the collar that I'm trying to get to there. Well, it's not behaving like I think it should. So I'm going to take this section off again, start by draining the oil. And then with it on the floor and the rest of this all disengaged just this part I might just be able to figure it out 
But what's puzzling me is when I hit the, the top here with this unlocked, I can't move the spindle down. And I thought I would be able to. I don't think there are any other collars that stop it moving because I've already moved the bevel gear upwards. So it's a bit strange. So unfortunately there's no shortcuts to this. I'm just going to have to figure it out, take it off and check it. Because it was getting so hot, you couldn't run it anything above about a thousand RPM without it getting ridiculously hot. That feels like too much resistance for just one bevel. Something's not right. I may be proved wrong, but it feels that way to me. So it's either in here or it's in here. As you can see, I've got the transfer shaft out and this feels fine to me. It turns very easily. But when you put it back on, you have to be careful because there's three holes there and those are the drain holes for the oil, which need to go at the bottom. This is held on by six caphead Allen screws and then you can use a couple of screws from the top cap as extractors there and there. So as for this, it still feels very kind of sluggish, but I'm thinking probably it's grease drag. The grease in this bottom bearing here is quite old. But I still think with that loose, and this gear out, I should be able to tap it and this should move down. It doesn't feel like that at the moment. Having slackened off all the collars, as much as I can, I've been striking this with a hammer and a block. I can't get it to move. So I've come to the conclusion that this spindle is seized in this bearing here, in the inner. So I think I'm going to have to press it out because if that's seized in there then you're not going to have any adjustment on the tension on that bearing. Now it may be okay, it may be just the grease that's dragging but I've got to the point now where I want to get this out and I want to clean all the grease off and make sure that it's adjusted correctly. You know I had to move this press from my workshop into the garage here and the light in here is appalling. I need to put some more lights up sometime. Anyway, I'm just going to press on this gently. And then as this moves down, I'm going to have to screw this collar up and the one above. And this bevel will come up off this shaft, or at least the shaft will go down. That's the point. And we'll get the bearings out, get all the grease off, top and bottom, and then check them, put it back together. Hopefully then we'll know and it'll spin fine. I felt it pop. I'm just checking this bottom collar, that's still free. So the bevel's free to move down. And it's still free. Oh, hold on, I've screwed the wrong way, that's why. Oh, it needs investigation. Don't like it. Well, I'm a bit nervous about this. That collar's free to move. The collar above is free to move. This gear is free to come up off the spindle. But the spindle isn't moving down. And I can only think it's the spindle seized in the inner of the top bearing. I can't think of any other thing that's stopping it moving down. I've given up trying to get any decent light onto this. Anyway, it went, but with quite a bang. So it was seized in that bearing at the top there, the inner, you know, against the spindle. So I've loosened this collar, the one above, I'm just gonna tap up this bevel a bit. Well, yeah, plenty of space now. 
move that collar up and carry on bit by bit until we get this out. I've been making progress. This collar is now off its thread. The one above is off its thread. There's a keyway locking this bevel gear to the spindle. Uh, so that key is coming down here inside of this sleeve here lined up. So we must be nearly there by now. I'll get my hand underneath this to make sure it isn't going to drop. I don't know how heavy it is. Right, that feels like it's out. So there's still a bit more to relieve somewhere. Out of the top bearing is what I mean. It's out. That key, which locks the bevel gear, also has to pass through that sleeve as well. So although this sleeve collar, whatever you want to call it, is normally screwed onto here, for this to pass through, that key has to pass through that. So you've got to get that lined up as well. Anyway, now we've got the whole stack in there. They can come out. You can see the bearing. First inspection, those rollers look absolutely fine. The issue has been this top. See if I can get it out. No, not easily. The uh, top inner has been seized on here and therefore there was no means of adjusting the preload. It was set to whatever somebody had once upon a time over tightened it to. No, I can't get this out. I'm going to end up knocking this off. I don't want to do that. Good. Top bearing, bevel gear, collars and spacer, spindle, bottom bearing, key, casing, obvious. Got to be careful with these. It just looks as if they've got three grub, Allen grub screws, but in fact behind each screw is a kind of bronze pad and it would be easy as anything to lose those. I'm not going to do a lot with them to be honest. You can see this black grease here, like CV boot grease. Now I thought that I'd got a lot of sludge in here and it isn't sludge, it's this CV boot grease that's been pumped right in and into here. So there's very little, if anything, to, well there's nothing to stop the grease getting pumped into this, you know, gearbox oil chamber. You can see how the grease has progressed up here into this, if you can see my finger in there somewhere. Yeah, and that's called an oil baffle or something like that. Mm, would have been better if there'd been oil seals on these, but there isn't. Anyway, the great news is, looking at these bearings, they look on first inspection to be absolutely fine. And I say that because they're about £200 each if you can find them. I didn't want to be spending that. So in f it, it looks as if the only thing that really needs to be done with this, apart from clearing out the old grease, is to do something with this bit here that runs into, you know, and through the centre of this bearing here. Because if it's too tight, you can't adjust the preload. It needs to be, you know, um, what's the right word? Just snug, but no more. Here I'm just highlighting what they call the baffle sleeve, this thing. Now the sight glass for the oil is on the front, over here, and the oil just comes to about there. And this is why you can't turn this head over more than about 45 degrees because the oil then starts to tip down here, I believe. And then we'll run into the bottom bearing. And probably that's why the grease has become discoloured in the bottom. I'd actually like to do some tests. Don't know quite how yet. <laughs> to put the oil in and then tip this over and then just see where the, you know, at what point does the oil start to run in here. It may be, um, yeah, maybe it just sits in the bottom there and it wouldn't go in, I don't know. Too much waffle. I've covered up this bearing to protect it and I've done some measurements of the bearing bore and this shaft here where the bearing presses onto. And by my calculation, there's a 1.2 thou interference fit here. 
So that's about three one hundredths of a millimetre interference. Now this should be a sliding fit on here, a kind of tap fit, because you've got to be able to tap this up and down. This screw is adjusting the preload, the collar that goes on that screw is adjusting the preload. So having a three ton press load to have to move this, because that's about what it was, three tons to get it to shift, is not right at all. But it must have been like this from the beginning. This shaft hasn't been remanufactured, I'm sure, this uh, spindle. And the bearing will be right. Um, it's a one and three eighths bearing, internal diameter, one and three eighths inches. So if we switch over to millimeters, the bore of that bearing is 34.925. And I'm measuring this at 34.95. So we've got, what is that? Two and a half, one hundredths to come off. I think this is going to take a while. I'm trying not to get it tapered. I don't want it really narrow here and wider here. So I'm working a bit at this end now. And I've got a thinner bar as a support. And I've got the guard down. I don't know if you can see. You probably can't see it. But I'm resting on the guard. So I'm not actually over the chuck. I'm on the guard. I think I've taken off about 0.8 of a mil. So we're about two thirds of the way there. Let's just try the bearing on it. It's hard to get it on squarely. Hmm. I think that needs a bit more off yet. It is. Yeah, it's not quite a tap fit. Well, boo hoo. <laughs> I've taken a fraction too much off this. It's reading exactly where, what I thought it should be. 34.925, which should be one and three eighths exactly. But when I put the bearing on now, it's too loose. Well, it's very difficult to get this started. There we are. So by here, it's binding up, which is kind of all right. But here, it's a bit too loose. And there's a risk that the inner will spin. This will lock and the inner will spin. So I'll need to put it on with some bearing shaft sealer lock type, the right type. I would have preferred to get this spot on. I mean, it's not undersized by very much, you know, maybe half a thou or something like that. I mean, there's no feel to it. I can't feel any rock or anything, but it should have been just a very light tap fit. So I've just gone a bit under. That's annoying, isn't it? Hmm. Well, that's what happens when you go by measurement and I should have stopped earlier and gone more by feel, but it's very difficult to get this started on the end of this shaft. Never mind, not a disaster. At least I'll be able to set the preload now. 